I have been married to my wife for the past 11 years. The two of us have two children, an elder daughter and a younger son. During our time at university, we were class fellows and fell in love after we met and started dating. My career as a military officer began after I graduated from college. Seeing as I have a military commitment, so my posting are in different states, and as she had a job here as well, it was also not feasible for her to migrate with me. Therefore, in my absence, my wife and I decided that she would live with her cousin Adam and his wife while I was away. Their house was just a short distance from ours, and they lived nearby. As far as their living situation was concerned, they rented an apartment. Therefore, I just thought about my wife and made sure that they lived in my house with her as well. Leaving her alone at home was something I did not want to do. I wanted to make sure she was comfortable and safe while I was away. I trusted her cousin Adam and his wife to take good care of us. My wife felt relieved knowing that she had someone close by to rely on. I was grateful for Adam and his wife for taking the responsibility to look after my wife. I was glad that my wife had someone she could trust. I knew that she would be safe and taken care of while I was away. As a result, whenever I went on duty, she would live with them while I was away. As soon as I got off duty, I used to come home to my family. It was eight years ago that my first daughter was born. It was a blessing for me to find out about it. It was a joyous moment for me that I'll never forget. As she grew up, she became more and more like her mother. However, right after my wife gave birth to my second child, a boy after four years, when he was growing up, his appearance started to change quite a bit. It is because girls always look up to their mothers for looks, but boys have a trait that does not have anything to do with their mothers, but it has everything to do with their father so that the child would be like me. However, the color of his eyes and the tone of his skin were different. This matter has been causing me a great deal of concern. In the past two years, I have only been able to visit the city a few times because I used to spend months at an army base. But when I came, I noticed these things and I was interviewed by them, so I continued to look into them. As far as my wife was concerned, she was still living with her cousin and his wife. As I was coming back home after an entire year and a half, it was a shock to me, so I thought that I would check out the son's situation this time around. Due to the fact that my instincts were telling me something very wrong was happening, in order to test my son's paternity, I took him to the hospital where we had the paternity test done. Due to the weekend, there was some delay in getting those reports delivered, so they will be delivered on Monday after two days. This gave me two days to check in on myself. During those two days, I began checking her cell phone for any signs of her whereabouts and found nothing. On a casual basis, I took her for a walk at night in a casual manner and I asked her laughingly that she doesn't miss me at all. Of course, she said. She missed me a lot. In my opinion, that is not the case. I then asked her if she loved me and she replied that she did. In response to this question, she asked me what is the purpose of asking this question. It is probably because I think that you did not and that you are cheating on me and I believe you did not do it. It took her a moment to stop walking and ask me again what is wrong with me. My statement was that there was nothing wrong with it but I just wanted to make sure I got it right. As my next step, I raised the question to her. I said, you know I live far away from her for a long time. Will she be able to understand what I am going through if I meet a woman and have a relationship with her? As soon as she heard that, she got angry and said, I don't think that will happen because I believe in you. I was thinking in my heart that maybe I am also able to believe that but it is too late now for me to do that. Once we have finished our walk, we will get back home. In the course of getting back home, she began watching me with strange eyes as soon as I got back. It was as if she was embarrassed or something like that. In any case, no matter what she said to me, 
I knew that she was cheating on me with someone else. I had a good understanding of her cousin's wife through our friendship, so the next day her cousin's wife was sitting in the garden, and I went to her and asked a few questions about my wife. In light of the fact that the main objective of my investigation was to obtain a clue that could lead me to the truth, I was in a hurry to complete my investigation. Despite the fact that it was true that I would be able to get the results of the paternity test in a few hours, the truth will soon come out in the open. However, it was simply my effort to see if I could find anything from her. However, I was not able to find anything from her. According to her, she has never had a male friend or met someone on the street or someone came to meet her. On the next day, the hospital sent out the reports that had to be collected from the hospital on that day. During that night, I had not slept a wink since my mind was storming with so many questions in my head that I was unable to sleep. On the other hand, I was curious to find out why she had done whatever she had done in the first place. As soon as I reached the hospital at 8 o'clock in the morning, I received my reports and went to the cafeteria to open them. After reading the report, I am left with a broken heart. I was not the father of that child. Additionally, it was evident that the girl was not my daughter as well. My heart felt like it was being ripped from my body, as if it was being torn apart. I have been cheated on by that woman for the last eight or nine years. There was no way it was going to be easy. Then I found out that she had been having physical relationships with someone else and those kids were not mine at the time. I felt lost and betrayed. I could not believe that she had done this to me. I felt like my world was crumbling around me. After a few minutes, my brain stopped working. As I had no other option, I just went to a local pub and drank for two hours and I had no other choice. I was so angry and hurt that I wanted to try to forget about it, so I just kept drinking. It was obvious to me that she was cheating on me and I knew it. As a result of my absence over the years, it has been very difficult for me. I did not raise these kids and I have nothing to do with their upbringing. Over and over again my brain was pounding with these thoughts, knocking me down again and again as they raced through it. As a result of the paternity test, it had been now confirmed that I was not the father of kids. Finally, I had reached the point where I had to face my wife face to face in order to resolve our issue. As I pondered what had happened, I was filled with a mixture of anger and sorrow. Despite my heartbreak, I knew I had to do something about the situation, no matter how painful it was. Then I took a deep breath and tried to calm myself. She was out with the kids in a nearby garden where they were playing. She arrived shortly after I waited for her. Upon her arrival, I was very angry and quiet at the same time. It was time to drop the kids off at their friend's house, so I took them there. It does not matter that they are not my kids, but they should not be exposed to drama, regardless of their age. I was going to have to deal with the situation in my house. Upon my return home, I simply handed over the paternity reports to her. There was a section in which the father of the kids was clearly mentioned. She had a wave of fear on her face when she saw the reports. I was not surprised that she showed that kind of fear. As a result, she stood there for many minutes, reading the reports over and over again while staring at them. Afterward, I went back to the living room and sat down on the couch. I once asked you what you thought of this report after a little while. What do you think about it? Could you please explain this to me in more detail? First of all, she behaved as if this report was fake and all sort of stuff. All of this creepy stuff was steered by her. In spite of this, I was not convinced because I was aware of all the facts about the case. As I was listening to her for a few minutes, she suddenly said there is no way these are the children of Jason. She was so panicked at the time, so she had no idea what she was saying or what she was trying to convey. After being shocked to the core, I stood up and looked around. The reason for this was that 
I had not taken any names from anyone. There is no mention of it in either of the reports. The earth lips beneath my feet as I listened to the name from her mouth. I was at a loss for words. All I could do was stare at her, trying to digest what she said. After I had gone near her, I held her by her arms and told her that I had not taken the name Jason. Suddenly she wheezed loudly and badly. In addition to that, she said it was all a mistake. I said her what was the mistake and she said that it had just happened one time and she was telling two kids of her cousin. Suddenly she started crying that she had a very good reason for what she was doing. While I did not want to listen to the story, I was still curious to know why she did what she did. Her next statement was that she had been aware that there had been a problem with your fertility from the beginning. In the following few days, she had gone to the doctor for a few tests and found that her sperms were not very effective, but she still wanted to have children. It was right after a year of marriage when I got back to the army base. Due to the fact that she lived with her cousin Adam and his wife at the time, this issue was discussed with them by her. She said that she was aware of the fact that her cousin's wife was infertile, so somehow her cousin and his wife managed to convince her that she should try to become pregnant. Due to the fact that his wife was also in desperate need of a baby. During our conversation, I asked her how the hell she could take this decision on her own. It was because she told me I wanted a baby that I made the emotional decision to become pregnant. There was a feeling of nails being pounded in my brain as I listened to her words. Even so, according to her, she was innocuous and did not do anything wrong in the process. When I asked her why you did not discuss this with me, she said that she did not know how to say. According to her, she was afraid of what was going to happen to her. In addition, she did not want to lose me as much as she could. I told her that if that was the case, we could adopt the kids. In case you really wanted kids, we could find another man who would donate his sperm if you really wanted to have children. My question to her was, have they gone through a test tube treatment? As far as I know, she did not answer my question. I then said, I understand now both of you slept. And when it turned out that you were pregnant, you both played the game together. According to her, she had not played any games in the past. When I asked her if your mother knew about this, she said yes, she did not know anything about it. After that, I told her that it was now my turn to play a game with her. As I told her, I'll send these paternity reports to her mother. As a result, you will now have to deal with her. It was at this point that she began to beg me to stop doing that. As I said, my world is destroyed because of you. I said that to her. As a matter of fact, I am damn willing to do that. It was not long before her cousin and his wife came home with her. As I shouted and she cried, they asked me why I was shouting and why she was crying. Suddenly, I grabbed her cousin by the collar and told him that he had to get out of my house as soon as possible. Despite the fact that he was asking me what happened, I showed him the paternity test reports and just gave him a few minutes to gather his belongings as well as give him the address where his kids should be picked up and never return to my life. Eventually, they left as soon as possible. After that, it was my wife's turn so I took pictures of the reports and emailed them to her mother and father as they were available. The woman's life is almost destroyed now as she was living in my palace like a queen. She had everything, but now she has lost everything. She used to live in my palace like a queen. It was time for her to leave the house because I kicked her out. The following day I went to my lawyer for divorce papers and he filed them for me. I was surprised to find out that after a week she came up and said she wanted to prune up but obviously she had cheated on me. It was me and my lawyer who sued her and won the case against her. After coming out of the slums she returned to them and lived in them once again. As my life took these unexpected turns in just a few days I decided to return my job since here is where I used to get these nightmarish nightmares when I was away from work. The nasty incident that happened in my life gave me wounds 
that will never be able to heal. In spite of this, I am still trying to move on from this. I've accepted the incident as a lesson and now I am trying to focus on the future. I am determined to live my life to the fullest and make the most of my every opportunity that comes my way. Life is too short to be wasted on regrets.